presenter has started a couple software companies in the recruiting space, and this gives him flexibility where he lives. In the past five years, he spent at least three weeks in cities including New Orleans, Auckland, Sydney, New York, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Boston, Montreal, and London. Please welcome David Sigmiller. What would you do if you could work from anywhere? I got this opportunity a few years ago and I thought, well, I'll find out living in different places. And I thought, you know, this would be easy. I've traveled around, enjoyed some trips around, around the world, and this would be like that, just to, you know, a little bit longer. As it turned out, it's, it's actually quite a bit different, and I want to share with you a few lessons I've learned from this experience. The first one is that it's very important to quickly build a social community because all your friends are far away, you're tired of doing things by yourself. And you don't just want to be on Facebook all the time. <laughs> so I knew it would be insulating, isolating to be staying in a hotel. So I thought, you know, a hostel should be better than that. I'll have roommates, there'll be common rooms, there'll be organized events, I'll meet lots of people. And I did that, I made lots of friends, but after about three days, they all left. They went on to the next destination, and I was left alone, back at square one, and a little bit more jaded than I was at the beginning. But I found it works better than hostels are having roommates, sharing home with people, and now we're going to be around longer than three days. And you can really get to know them and, and start to feel like you belong, but you can't hold on to just only your roommates. Pretty soon they'll be sick of you and dodging you and that roommate they don't really like. So I needed to find a way to get out of the house and, and meet other people, make new acquaintances. And I found three things that were really good for this. One, at least for me, one was uh, professional networking nights. The next one was couch surfing events, and the third one was meetup. And all these were great ways to make lots of acquaintances. And just naturally, over time, you will, you will make friends out of these acquaintances. But I didn't have much time. I'm going to the next place in, in a number of weeks or a couple of months. So I, I found out I needed to speed it up a little. And, and the people that I really get along with, I invited them maybe to get coffee or... I, I've learned you can talk to someone for 20 minutes and then tell them, I'm um, having a few people over for dinner next Tuesday, maybe you'd like to join, and they'll say yes. And I did that, and then through all these steps, I suddenly ended up with a really strong social connection and a sense of belonging in a place where only a month or two earlier I didn't know no one. So, lesson one is about building a social community. The second lesson is about materialism. And this one doesn't take as much uh, work, it just kind of beats itself into you. Uh, the first one is that you can't have too much stuff if you're going to keep moving from place to place. It's not feasible to carry it with you. And you also can't have too nice of stuff because it might get destroyed in a washer or it might go. I was in Germany a few years ago. I had all my luggage. I went to the train station, put it in the locker, went out with my friends, came back a few hours later, and the door was open. And the contents were, there were no contents. Someone had taken all my belongings. All I had was what were in my pockets. And that, that's a good way to learn that don't have too much stuff, don't have it too nice, and and <clears throat> make sure it's easily replaceable. And, and one silver lining, in my opinion, is now you have an excuse to wear the same clothes over and over again. You don't need to waste any time in the morning deciding what to wear, although if you do go to all these networking events, some of the people do catch on. There's this one guy said, oh, stripes again. <laughs> <laughs> so lesson two is about materialism. Lesson three is about moderation. And the idea is really simple, like, don't, don't do some things too much and don't do other things too little. Uh, but, and when you, when you have a normal, stable life, these things kind of work themselves out over time. You don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about them. But I, was, I kept changing my place and then the, the, the opportunity of things to do around me. And I found I needed to be a little more deliberate in two ways. One is that things that I really do enjoy, if I do them too often, <laughs> I don't like them, I won't like them anymore. Um, I made a mistake of going to two aquariums in the same year. I have to say the, uh, the fish of the second aquarium looked a lot like the one. <laughs> I think once a decade is good for that one. Now, so, you don't do things you like too much because you don't like them anymore. The other thing is, some things, if you look at them and say, I don't know if I really like that, I bet if you do it once, you'll enjoy it. Maybe you do it ten times and you won't still like it, but it, it's, it, I, I was encouraged by uh, to trying once and then getting positive feedback is try new things. You don't maybe you won't want to do them ever, but you really enjoy the one time you do it. 
as some of the earlier talk presented to talk about. Okay. So back to Michigan. Um, I can easily, I, it, it turns out to be very easy to slip back into my old life and old routines. And I've, I've tried to resist that and, and apply these things. The, the intentional uh, uh, building social networks, the, the appropriate materialism, the balance between doing things the right amount and not too little. And, and my life, I think, is better as a result. I'm, I'm seeing things that I missed the first time around. So hopefully, maybe you don't get the same chance to go around as I have. Maybe some of these things would be applicable to you as well.